UK. Nine minutes past six. Now, a leading child protection expert says there are still major flaws in the system five years on from the SOAM abductions. Mark Williams Thomas has spent 15 years working in the field as a police detective and a consultant to schools, local authorities and sports bodies. Well, he told Weekend Breakfast that offenders are able to slip through the net. We can speak now to Five Lives' Rowan Bridge, who's been speaking to him. So, Rowan, first of all, just, just take us back and remind us of these recommendations made after the SOAM murders. Yes, yeah, so there was what was known as the Bishard inquiry into what went wrong with the system, what improvements could be made. Now, that made 31 recommendations. Now, one of the key ones that came out of that was the problem of the lack of information sharing between Cambridgeshire and Humberside Police. And one of Bishard's key recommendations was that there should be a single computer system for the police that would allow every police force to access all the information held by all other police forces at the click of a mouse. Now, that system was meant to have been in place this year. It's now running three years late. It won't be in place till 2010 at the earliest. But there's also worrying claims he's making here that people are actually getting round the criminal record checking system at the moment. That's right. So if you're uh, going to work with children, so let's say you're a newly qualified teacher, you undergo what is known as a criminal record check. And what it does is, as it says on the label, checks uh, your criminal record to see if you've got previous convictions and so on. And that could then bar you for working with children. But what Mark Williams Thomas says is that, in fact, it's very easy to con the system. What happens from a Criminal Records Bureau disclosure check is that the applicant fills it in with previous addresses. A check is then done against that. But if that person fails to put in the address that's relevant to perhaps a, an area that they were in trouble, then of course the CRB checkers don't have those details. And anybody could come across and put themselves forward as a name with a false ID and that check then gets done. So you're saying it's very easy to work around it? Absolutely. I know people, um, there was a case that we dealt with fairly recently where a person had a false ID, they got into an old people's home and subsequently went on and abused the people in the children's home, actually in a sexual nature. But what happened was that this person had passed a CRB check, even had a CRB form, but was on a false identification. They were using a false name. So how are the Home Office responding to those claims? Well, we put this to the Home Office and asked for ministers to come on to respond. Now, they declined our request for an interview, but they did release a statement saying that they don't just rely on what a person says on the form that they send in. They use what they described as sophisticated methods to check the data, but it's a bit of a catch-22. They didn't want to say what those were because the argument is that you would then be able to work around them. But they also say that the accuracy of the information they release is incredibly accurate, 99.97%, according to the Home Office. So even when these CRB checks have been carried out, people are getting the information back, there's still sometimes problems. Yeah, the, this is what Mark Williams Thomas is saying. So some people will, will undergo what's known as an enhanced CRB check. So it will not just throw up criminal convictions, but it will also throw up any other information that the police may hold on the person, which didn't necessarily lead to a conviction. And that's all really come about since the Bishard inquiry, a lot more information coming forward to people. Um, Mark Williams Thomas says the problem is that people don't always know what to do with that information. There's a considerable amount of people out there who have no knowledge and understanding of how to assess the risk of that information and are therefore treating it on the basis they don't have a conviction and therefore they are safe. And I know, because we work with local authorities and sports governing bodies, there are people out there working within sports who should not be and who certainly haven't been through a risk assessment. Where's the system falling down? Well, what, we happen, what has happened is that from a front-end system through the Bishard has enabled a lot more intelligence to come back from people's records, so showing that someone's been arrested. That's fantastic. But what you then have to do is to make sure you've got the back-end right. So you need to make sure that there is a training for people to understand what that intelligence means. What do I do with that intelligence? Where do I go with it? That isn't happening. That's quite worrying. Some people working in sports shouldn't be. I mean, parents particularly will worry about comments like that, won't they? Yeah, and I took these concerns to Sports England, a sort of umbrella body for sports organisations in England. And um, they said, interestingly, at the moment, there is no statutory requirement for voluntary bodies to carry out CRB checks on people, though they stress that most organisations do carry them out. And in fact, it will become the law from September next year. On the specific point, what Sports England say is that sports governing bodies should be the ones that carry out CRB checks, that Sports England offers specific training to people who are dealing with CRB checks so they know how to deal with the information, and they advise that sports governing bodies have outside advisors who are experts in child protection to also advise them on how to deal with them. So they say there should be the information and training in place for people to know how to deal with the stuff that they get back. Okay, thank you very much. That's fine.